Greetings and welcome back to Room 303, AP English, and the Roberts Lectures. We turn now to Ben Johnson's On My First Daughter, a poem of 1616. Now, of course, we know Johnson's work, our study, of course, earlier of uh, to uh, my son, my first son, which is, of course, a famous uh, text as well that we've studied together, of the death of a child. And... Uh, we said this in our study of Herrick's Here, Pretty Baby Lies from uh, page 645, an earlier lecture that we've already given and is available at LearnStrong.net, that during this time when we're, when we're speaking, right, roughly 1600, lots of children tragically passed. And Johnson now dealing with the death of his infant daughter, uh, Mary, who died at six months old. We're, we're not exactly sure what year that happened. But this is a tribute poem to her. Now, let's just remind ourselves about Johnson, 1572 to 1637. Brilliant English playwright poet, of course, contemporary of Shakespeare and Milton. Here is, of course, a poem of sadness and elegy, as we have sometimes called it. Let's uh, turn to the poem, read it, and then work levels uh, one, uh, what does the text say, two, what does the text mean, and three, how can I relate to it in some way. Uh, Johnson says, here lies... To each her parents' Ruth, Mary, the daughter of their youth. Yet all heaven's gifts, being heaven's due, it makes the father less to rue. At six months in she parted hence with safety of her innocence, whose soul heaven's queen, whose name she bears, in comfort of her mother's tears, hath placed amongst her virgin train where, while that severed doth remain, this grave partakes the fleshly birth, which cover lightly gentle earth. Now, of course, the situation of the poem is the passing of the child. But we would say more than that, wouldn't we? The fact that an adult has to grieve with the passing of a child may be one of the worst imaginable of pains. And yet notice how our speaker here, of course, Johnson himself, is going to deal with the ruin, the loss, the sorrow. Two observations. One, obviously, is that while placed in the grave, the soul has somehow been able to escape. And then the symbolism of the stars, to be up in the virgin train, the stars, allowing then the belief that the child is still able to be remembered as valued, even though she didn't live very long. Of course, a possible message here is we have to learn how to accept death. And certainly, faith is a way to help one accept the fact that all, all things must end. As we have said many times, we only get to swing at the park for a brief period of time, and then we have to go to the van. I don't want to go to the van. I'm sorry, that's the way it is. And to that degree, the potentiality of death makes living so profoundly precious. We mustn't forget that. As we said already at 2B, the profound uh, symbolism of stars. Notice the rhythms as, as well as we were looking at them. Here lies to each her parents, Ruth. You can hear that ba bum, ba bum, ba bum, ba bum, right? The iambic. At 3A, we mentioned already um, a lecture that we've already given at LearnStrong.net on my first son and the passing, of course, of a child named Benjamin, and then as well Herrick's poem, as we said already, uh, um, Here a Pretty uh, Baby Lies. L let's think a little bit about it, 3B, a time that you lost something for which you're really sad and for which you will forever root, you'll forever be sad. Well, there you go. One more Ben Johnson offering. I hope you'll want to read more of his amazing work. Thank you.